question is for the Prime Minister. Um, I was hoping that the Minister of ECYS would have been here to answer the question. Nonetheless, he is not. Prior, he stated that uh, the repairs to the various schools would have been done in a timely manner for the reopening of schools. Um, re reopening of school. Um, the new school year officially starts as of Monday. Um, where are those repairs now in terms of students returning to their classrooms on Monday? Thank you, um, Stephen. Indeed, we had the a discussion yesterday in the Council of Ministers. The minister did brought it to our attention, specifically for a school that will open a little later because of um, the repairs not being concluded. I, I'm, I'm going to say this again. It's, 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 we received a lump sum of insurance monies, which also includes the schools. At the time, the former Minister of Education requested for the most vulnerable schools for it to start the um, for them to receive funding the schools were then given the, the identified schools were given the money to start the, the repairs were they given all of the monies no because the insurance did not give us all of the monies that um, we were supposed to have that is still being discussed disputed negotiated all of the three besides that the minister of education has requested funding from the trust fund and that took some time as well I do know that he he managed to put a project in for I believe it is the total value is about 35 million to assist in the repairment of schools and bringing schools up to par post hurricane I am not proud of where we're at right now when it comes to school repair and so definitely one of the talks that we spoke about is whether we should leave the schools through their subsidy pay for their own insurance and then not leave you know because when we received the monies we received it in a bulk but it was not only for schools it was for the government building for dif for different as different things that we were insured for so we are in a dilemma so the talk is right now, or the discussion is, whether we would leave the schools, pay for their own insurances, and see if they can, and because that's something that the, some of the boards did discuss, and our, the discussion was there. But we're looking for a solution for it, and I'm not happy. I have voiced my opinion as well with the um, NRPB, with the World Bank Steering Committee, the members, that we need to escalate the process, because Hurricane is here, hurricane season is here number two school is about to reopen and you know we really don't want that situation for our children but this is the reality that we're we're faced in and we're doing everything that is possible to make sure that we get the rest of the insurance monies so that the schools can have those monies to finish off what they need to finish but am i proud of it no i'm not I'm definitely not proud of it am i happy no i have voiced my opinion time and time again and so have the other ministers that this process when it comes to emergency repair needed to be escalated because here we are faced next week, children are going to go back to school with um, schools still damaged. Thank you, Prime Minister. We now move on to the final round of questions. Alita, you have the floor. Thank you again, Orlika. My question uh, dovetails into um, the issue of insurance. Uh, Prime Minister, you just mentioned that you're still, in, in a way, waiting for some insurance money. Within a month, will be one year, I'm uh, sorry, two years before, um, after Hurricane Irma. How much money is still outstanding um, for government? And uh, going into that, the airport also, um, what is the status with the um, loans, um, the loans that have been approved for the airport, the uh, 100 million? And when can we actually see work start there? Because of course, we also have insurance issues there as well. Alita, as it relates to the amount that has been disputed, I don't have the ev exact figures right now, but I know definitely the amount that was quoted from before is definitely what we will not accept. So hence the dispute or the discussion. As it relates to the airport, I will leave the Minister of Finance answer that particular question as he is directly involved via the government or on behalf of the government for it. Uh, as we all know, um, there is quite some uh, insurance payout 
um, in a account uh, from the bondholder at the, uh, at the airport. Um, and that is exactly one of the uh, points um, that we hopefully have finalized now. Uh, we have been busy the past weeks to come to a form of a agreement because there are a lot of components in getting the, uh, the um, financing together. The financing, the amount, that was one part. The other part is how do we go about releasing, getting released the insurance proceeds that were paid out to the airport. According to the contract that is there, um, the, the insurance proceeds were paid into a, uh, an account that is managed by the bondholder, and the bondholder is the one that decides when to release it back to the airport for uh, uh, whatever reason in the, in the uh, re reconstruction of the airport. Um, I believe that we will be able to finalize, uh, to come to a conclusion with the bondholders on that, because once we have uh, put some guarantees in place, which we did in the meantime, uh, we committed to that, uh, we need to sign a so-called concession agreement uh, with a, uh, for that reason. And that the, the purpose of it is, is then that out of the insurance proceeds, funds will be released that will be earmarked to be used together with uh, the, the, the 101 million uh, for the reconstruction of the airport. Um, so we are trying to, uh, to put the, uh, the dot on the I right now to finalize that. And then we have to move to, uh, to procurement, you know, uh, put the bid out for the contractors to do it, and then we're moving forward to. So I have no, I can't give you an idea on when we will see yellow helmets and yellow fest walking in a building. But the, 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 the contract, the agreement that is in the final phase now um, to satisfy um, the, some of the uh, concerns of the bondholder. Um, and then we can move to the, uh, to the procurement of, uh, of the project. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. It's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. So much of it said as it pertains to repairs to the various schools. Um, prior, you had the Minister of Education who said that this would have been done in a timely manner. This is not the case up to now. The Prime Minister said that she is very disappointed with the process. You have taken note of this. Well, um, again, um, as she said, she is not proud. 
of where we are. The reality is the, the discussions and the meetings started earlier in the year. As everyone knows, when you have a specific project, you have to tender it and we have to abide to all the legal laws and regulations that goes with that. Right now, I can talk for the public schools um, in terms of the funds we were supposed to have. If you would drive around to the public schools, it was two phase. You had a phase because it was roof, doors, windows, plumbing, electricity, etc. Right now, the company that has the windows and the hurricane shutters, they have already started. And most of the schools already have the hurricane shutters. They continue that. In regards to the construction works, the, the, the roof, etc., that is also on task. But it was not only the ministries. Um, it's not only the minister or the of Romi or division public education or school managers. It was a it was a cohesive effort, and our contractors also encountered some challenges in terms of deliverables. So it's a combination of things that led to right now. I know for the public schools that um, the repairs have not been done, but there we there have been meetings with the school managers. The school managers are right now ascertaining what's really, what's the status now they're back. And we're going to continue the meetings and we're going to work together with the two contractors to make sure that the maintenance and the repairs are done before December. If it doesn't finish before December, hopefully the weather also goes with us because we know how we live here in St. Martin. But all initiatives are there really to get the the roofing, the doors, the windows, the plumbing, and the electrical works done within the public schools. And I really want to thank Mr. Kurt Ruan. I really want to thank the Minister of Education. And I specifically want to thank the school managers for their cooperation. Some of them came back during the vacation to have these discussions. And I want to thank right now my staff at Public Education who worked tirelessly during the vacation to make sure that everything is in place. So yes, our schools are not um, um, completely fixed, but we don't have a problem in terms of working along with everyone because at the end of the day, it is about the children. And say what may, um, the fact is everybody in their own corner have to understand that this is about us providing a safe environment for the children. So even though construction will be going on, now that school is doing, nothing would happen during the school hours. So it's either after one or in the weekend. But it is the intention to put a plan of action together, to, find, to finalize the plan of action so that we can have the schools up and running. Those repairs are to be carried out at how many schools? Um, actually, right now at six of our schools, the first part, which uh, Oranje School, Marie Genevieve, Dr. Alma Fleming Rogers Center, Martin Luther King, Siman Vocation Training School, and Ruby La Bega. And then the second part would be Leonard Connor School and the Charles Bell School in Colby. Hey ma, how you doing? You busy? I hear, just paying some bills, taking care of business, you know what it is. <laughs> I know, you're doing your online banking. I don't have to stand in those long lines to pay bills. I can transfer when I want, I can check my account wherever. It's like the bank open 24-7. I even hear checking the statement right now as we're talking. How's Miami? 
Well, that's why I'm calling. I'm finishing up a few songs now, but I'm afraid that studio time might be more than I thought. And I was wondering if I could get some help with some funds and I could pay you back as soon as I get back to St. Martin. Let me check my account. How much you need? I think 500 should be enough. I can transfer it to you while online. Direct from me to you. No problem. Great. Thank you so much, ma. I'll get online with Bib now. All right, darling. You know who you're for. <laughs> I need to know who you're for. Contact Web today for your complete personal online banking experience. Available for all mobile devices. The Winwood Islands Bank. Now your online banking partner in progress. Um, the minister was busy with that advice, so I think within short we should hear something concerning the traffic light in that specific area or wherever he was um, going to put it. I remember that we spoke about it in the Council of Ministers and it was ordered. I can, I can state that. That's what we got. As it relates to the old government building, we have, um, at least for my person, I have in spoken to the Ministry of Romi as, in ho uh, as a whole and also to Facility Affairs Department about the demolishing of that building, especially in light of the peak of the hurricane season coming up and we want to make sure that it is not a threat for any of the households or other buildings around there. We were told that um, within short that it would be demolished. I believe it's supposed to be within a couple of weeks that will be demolished. I had to be actually to tell you the truth last week. So I have to actually follow up on that was what was the hold up. I believe probably the rainy season that we the rain the rainy um days that we had um recently but the idea is to demolish th that building before the peak of the hurricane season. If I can add to that Miss Roach um thank you Mr Cerulean for your question. The road markings as well as the potholes which have been featured on the front page of the, one of the daily newspapers, um, those are just things that were pending, waiting on the approval of the budget. Um, that also played a factor in many of these uh, issues that you were addressing. So now that the budget has been passed, there is still a report that has to come from Parliament and it still has to be published in order for us to actually go ahead and execute what we have to do based on that law of the budget being um, accepted and published. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Minister DeWeaver. We now move on to the second round of questions. Aliza, you have the floor. Thank you again, Rolaika. My question is for the Minister of Justice. You mentioned in your opening statement about the Miss Lally Center. Could you give a general update on the status of that center and when it will be put back in full use? Is there sufficient personnel for when it will start? And uh, generally, you know, what is the timeline? Thank you, Ms. Singh, for your question. The Ms. Lally Center is almost on schedule. We had a slight delay with the doors, but that we are trying to make up on time as far as the installation of them. So that's also being done. As far as the staffing, we have already started recruiting new staff, but we are also in discussions with, for example, the Dr. J Foundation to provide additional services to our youth who are being um, held at the Miss Lally Center and the small delays that we have experienced but we hope that in the next week or two that they will all be finalized. Um, we'd have liked to open it about a month ago but with the delays it has cost us to push it back to when what we call opening around the school period time so which is probably by next week or the week after but we would like to have it ready by then.
why also we are fighting and trying to get parliament to understand the way out of the quicksand is to stand still you can't be fighting the tide in the quicksand you're not going to get out of the quicksand if you don't use your intelligence they have to also come to the understanding of why and read what needs to be implemented who need to implement it where the funding is coming from must come from it's not you telling and not from the budget of st martin no curacao no aruba i'm not speaking from my own mind these are instructions given to the netherlands to stop the discrimination of the island stop holding back their development and do not ask them to pay for things that you supposed to be paid paying for i'll give you a good illustration on that aruba curacao and bonaire aruba curacao and st martin always fought one another curacao st martin curacao aruba holland created a scheme called the netherlands antilles holland make the islands those brothers and sisters there take care of each other that shouldn't be and she trapped us and she fooled the people of the, the netherlands antilles and then we boss even over each one another and what happened then we became enemy one towards the other that was a, a, a typical trap that the dutch had set for our development and how we develop based on how they want and they decide our development then they came with a little untwickling uh, uh, development aid no all those things that were provided on saint martin by the central government station save and bonaire and that you find the problem that Kurosalini used to say is our money. Then Aruba jumped out and said uh, she wants to regulate her own money, which is right, correctly. Then St. Martin took up a more responsible role of taking care of Station Sabre together with Curacao. We're in the responsibility of Curacao, no St. Martin. It's a, it's a Dutch trap. These were the responsibility of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. But she fooled us. Now they want to fool us a second time around. We have another framework and telling us we have to take care of the people. You have to understand one thing. We are living into a structure called the Kingdom of the Netherlands. You have one side, a, a country, which is the Netherlands, who went out on her journeys and colonized territories, brought in slaves and created her kingdom these people lack development these people development is being governed and decided by by the colonizer who call in modern day a kingdom but the kingdom is not based on equality the kingdom is not based on listen you will have similar rights to the person in europe the kingdom is still governed on the same discriminatory rules and practices of time past you're supposed to get so much why because you live in the caribbean that's not human base human rights base that's discrimination and that for such reason our development we will never attain a development on 400 million guilders we can never take dutch quarter and do something good out of it K Hill, Mineral Region, um, K Bay, whatever have you, and develop good districts, livable districts, and invest. We need to start having conversation about climate change. And these are obligations by the kingdom to see to it that the climate change and the protection with the sea rise and all these things, it is its responsibility, the kingdom responsibility. Because the islands cannot go out and borrow funds. But neither does the Netherlands put funds in place. So how can parliamentarian and minister 
have this stupid this stupidity for discussion about we got to do it within our means you can never do it within your means you have to understand that you have this framework that limits you discriminate you and tell you you are free so take away the tools for development and tell me we expect you to develop and that's the discussion we would like to see i had recently a discussion with a parliamentarian i realized in that discussion there that the parliamentarian care less and is void on this knowledge it doesn't make it as to try to at least get to know what's going on oh eh, we should do everything now. i mean you can't do it if you truly understand it from a macro level like you see he just think mini you know like mickey mouse level i could clearly see that so this is what we want parliament why we want this discussion now to move to parliament and for parliamentarian now to start now having this discussion read these papers and if need more information we are willing to sit down and share with parliament and put this this is not drama this is really how a country will, will be able to develop but you need to know who is strangle, strangling your 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 chances or opportunities for development you need to know where those threat lies and it isn't far it's clear it is done by the kingdom of the netherlands themselves the fight that we have here the blindness where we look towards our own budget that's that's the part where they are fooling us to keep looking here for our development saint martin will never no kershaw no aruba no anyone the island them will never develop to their full potential if we don't realize that all and i'm not saying it these are ratified convention that makes it clear 